Hello everyone, Lord Master of Sotek here, and it's here. It's finally here. I am so excited to dive in and do my kind of live reaction thing that you know we always do for these new trailers because it is finally happening. Chaos Dwarfs are here. So without any further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and hop into the trailer. Um, I'm very, very excited to share this experience with y'all. I can't wait to see what's all gonna be in it. Uh, I also have a blog article that we're gonna go over afterwards as we normally do on these types of videos. So without further ado, um, let's check out what Creative Assembly has to offer. Uh, and I will have a link down below uh, so that you can check out the trailer and the blog for yourself. So be sure to check that out if you don't want to deal with my stupid reaction or whatever. Here we go, here we go. Forsaken, abandoned to the dark, what choice but to follow the flame? Ooh. Oh, oh, lava cannons! Oh, they're attacking the dwarves. The oh, okay, we got slaves. Look at that hobgoblin. Oh, it's the tent. Oh, it's the tent. Oh, it's Gordas. Nothing remains but power and ambition. Oh my God! Look how sick this forge is. always demand more. More fuel. More. More sacrifice. More. The fiercest. Oh, the iron demon. The steel. Oh, the infernal guard. from within the crucible. Oh, that looks so good. Holy shit! Is that Zarnagrid? Oh, look at the helmets. Oh. To seize the world with this fire. It's Big Daddy. It. Oh, they. Burn okay, so they went with his original design. What is that? Oh, the Bell Taurus. <gasps> oh, the Lamasu looks really good. Oh, shit. Look at the Fireborn. Oh, 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 oh my. Fucking God. Oh, that low brass. The Forge of the Chaos Dwarves, April 13th. So we have less than a month before release. My God. Oh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Look at, look at fucking Astrogoth. Astrogoth looks so good. Oh, that's a big hat. I, I really, I'm so, oh my God, dude, the destroyer. Okay. Okay. Let's do our, let's do our little breakdown here. Let's do our little breakdown. Dude, the destroyer looks so good. Oh, like, okay. So this is, this is clearly like inspired by the design. Uh, so when they released the Tarmacon book, there was a like uh revealed mini for the Kadai Destroyer, but it wasn't actually released. Um for, I don't know why, but they never released it. Um Forge World didn't. But it did appear at a showing. Um there's pictures of it on the internet, but it didn't look exactly this is notably different. Um God, look at these big like Fuck you arrowheads it has on its arms. Um, this looks way better than the original design, to be clear. Uh, the original design had like, it had like a mask. Um, and under the mask, it had like a face. It was really weird looking. I I, I really didn't like the way it looked, to be honest. Um, this, this has like a similar body shape, um, but overall looks so much better. Okay, so let's, let's start from the beginning and work our way forward. Um... But like, fuck. Okay, first of all, uh, cool to hear the narrator from Champions of Chaos and uh, 
uh, making a return. To the dark. And three kingdoms. What choice but to follow the flame? I, I love her voice. And of course, she's talking about how the Chaos Dwarves were forsaken by, well, they believed they were forsaken by all of the other, their kin, uh, the regular dwarves and the ancestor gods. And they were forced down into the depths of uh, Uzkalak, uh, fearing that they were going to be overwhelmed by a unspeakably huge Chaos Horde outside. And so they made a bargain with something they shouldn't have. Oh my god, dude. Just the, just the sheer amount of shit to look at in this first frame. Okay, so we've got, we've got a Chaos Dwarf Lava Cannon, which looks absolutely incredible. Look how good it looks. Man, that's a big war machine. Look how big it is compared to like all the little dwarfs next to it. Uh, looks like we got Chaos Dwarf Warriors. And look, they got the big hats. We got big hats. Okay, so we do have big hat dwarfs. Uh, but it's like a mix. It looks like they're, they're doing big hat and Forge World. It seems that they're literally just using the Forge World designs, except for where the Forge World units just, like, aren't there. And then they replace them with um, the, the big hat dwarfs. So here, we, okay, we see we've got Lava Cannons. Um, you've got the Chaos Dwarf Siege Towers. You've got Bull Centaur Renders. Uh, looks like we've got orc slaves, I'm guessing. Um, we've got hobgoblins down here and just so many chaos dwarf warriors. Look at all these chaos dwarfs. Oh my, and they're the, 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 I love that they're, they are showcasing them attacking the dwarfs. Oh, it's going in the book. It's going in the book. And here, um, oh, oh, look, look, look. So the bull centaurs are wielding, look, 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 we got different weapons. So we have bull centaurs with twin weapons here. And then this is a bull centaur with a great weapon. I think, or am I crazy? Am I crazy? No, no, yeah, he's got a great weapon. Okay, so it looks like we've got at least two, oh yeah, there's another one with a great weapon. So we've got different variants. Uh, then we've got chaos dwarfs here with blunderbusses and shields. Okay, blunderbuss and shields. So I wonder if they're gonna be uh, I'm assuming these are warriors, but man, look how good their faces look. They have very detailed faces. Uh, we got goblin slaves, orc slaves. No black orc slaves, though. They're, I swear to God, CA, if there are black orc slaves, we're going to have a problem. Um, so here we can see they've torn down uh, the dwarf settlement. And the, the greenskin slaves are tearing down all the ancestor god iconography. You got dwarves overlooking them. Oh, we got hobgoblin uh, wolf riders. Very cool. We got wolf riders. Uh, another uh, bull centaur running around. Hobgoblin being all hobgoblin y. He's dead slayers. Burning away all fear, doubt, and. Oh, man. Dude, Zatan looks so good good he looks exactly like his tabletop model and he's just being an absolute asshole and just kicking this like dwarf long beard yeah just <laughs> just punting him off the cliff here oh he looks so good look how dude he has the biggest hat or one of the biggest hats but man his color scheme is wild um man he sticks out like he's got that like scream in your face blue and then he's got like all the flame designs and black like he, uh, I love his beard. His beard looks fantastic. He's got like a, like a, like a, like a swirl beard, but he's got all these little extra parts coming off and he's got the big old tusks. He looks absolutely incredible. Um, I'm, I'm so happy and kind of a surprise. They kept him so close to his original design. Like he's, you know, he's had a little bit of a touch up. But, like, he is outlandishly co colored, you know. He's almost, it, it's almost kind of hilarious looking. But you could see, like, places where the paint has started to, like, fade away. Or it's, like, chipped and stuff from presumably him fighting in battle. So, oh, man, Satan must just be a tanky boy. Doubt and weak. Oh, and there's Gordas. There's Gordas again. Man, okay, Gordas has snuck in, like, at least twice. And Oh my god, he looks terrifying. And Look at the smile on his face. And he looks like the really fucked up versions of the Joker. Like, look at that, like, huge fucking smile. Look how good his armor looks, though. 
It's like the <laughs> I don't know what this style is called, um, but it kind of reminds me of like uh, Eastern aesthetic. Uh, like you see it in a lot of like Japanese stuff. But he, yeah, that has to be Gorda's. Like it looks exactly like the tabletop model. We got these dwarf slaves being taken in. But oh, he's got the hat and the horns, and he's got like the super badass spikes coming out of his back. He can ride a giant wolf, which is great. Weakness. We saw him earlier. He shows up in another. Yeah, there he is. Oh, he looks so good. Wow, he is terrifying looking. His mouth is gigantic gigantic and it is just filled with teeth uh he looks amazing though so <laughs> i almost kind of feel bad for the green skins that the first giant wolf riding character is a hobgoblin instead of a regular goblin gatilla the hunter is going to be so upset uh he looks amazing though. oh god i just love his armor and he's got that same he's got that same kind of blue and red color scheme that Zatan does um, on his metal and like his hood and stuff. But like, he looks so good. Cause like, he's a, he's a big deal hobgoblin, but um, cause the, the wolf riders, the wolf riders are not traditional hobgoblin slaves. So you'll notice the hobgoblin we saw earlier, uh, this guy, he, he dresses very like ridiculous, right? Like he's got a really big hat on, um, and he's wearing robes that are very brightly colored. So he's got like the yellow and red and stuff. And he's like, it's a pretty big goblin. Um, so he's like, you know, it's a large goblin, big nose, big ears. Um, but he's like covered in very flashy robes. So this is like a traditional hobgoblin. This is a hobgoblin cutthroat. Um, but the actual Please. hobgoblins, like the hobgoblins Running from the hobgoblin conate, they don't dress it. like that because Down. they're not influenced and by chaos or culture. And you can like see this guy back here. This is a real hobgoblin. So this is a hobgoblin from the hobgoblin Kane. And we can see they have armored wolves. Look how, God, look how badass their wolves look. They've got armored helmets, which makes them look way fucking scarier than the regular ones for the green skin roster. And then you got this pissed off grumbly looking guy. And he's so you can see he's got that kind of same armor pattern. Um, Gore, Gore does is obviously like a mix of the two. Cause Gore does is an actual, uh, chaos dwarf slave goblin. He, he calls himself a con, but he's not really, um, he just kind of like m appropriated the title and he claims to be a big shot, but he still belongs to the chaos dwarfs. Um, whereas this guy, this guy's more like a mercenary. He doesn't actually serve the chaos dwarfs in a, like, he's not the one of their slaves. He is, he is a creature that has essentially been hired. Um, and he looks absolutely incredible. I love the, I don't know how to describe it, but they've got like those little plates in their armor. Um, but it's like such a cool, it's such a unique design. Uh, and then they've got like, and you can see they're not wearing the big hats and they don't have like the really garish robes. Um, you know, it's, it's much more, it's much more, uh, practical and simplistic and there's a lot more metal and like actual armor. Uh, so this is how you could tell a real hobgoblin from the hobgoblin conate versus a chaos dwarf lackey, um, which, you know, have the crazy amount of, uh, stuff. God damn. Look at that settlement. So this is, this is a siege settlement. You can see the walls over here and then you got the bridges and stuff. I cannot fucking wait. I cannot wait to lay siege to this or defend it, but most often lay siege to it. Uh, but look at that. You got like the fire and fumes belching out of the, the different like fact. There's so much fire. There is so <laughs> much fire. So I wonder if this is supposed to be Tsar Nagrand itself, or if this is just supposed to be like a city. Uh, like you could, like you could say, oh, that's Nothing the black tower, the black fortress. The then we go into the forge. Oh, look, look, look! You can see the chaos doors are are. Uh, look, they're trading with the warriors of chaos. If you, so, there's there's two chaos warriors down here negotiating with the chaos dwarfs. That's that. That's a really cool. That's a really cool attention to detail. That's very very clever. Oh, that's really cool. So here we can see more chaos dwarfs running around. Um, with their big old hats. Ambition. God, those are huge hats. This roaring fire will oh, but like here the hats are more, more like, so like some of the characters hats are much more like reasonable and contained. 
which I like. I love I love the fortune here. It looks super badass. Dreadquake mortar! More sacrifice. Oh the my god, look at that deep. armor, dude. That armor looks sick. He's got like the the gorget and they've got the the black shard scales. Oh the my god, it looks so good. Okay, oh look, they're the Chaos Dwarf laborers from the uh, Hell Cannon crew. So that that's the Hell Cannon crew right there, the the naked Chaos Dwarfs. So we've got Dreadquake mortars. Uh these must be these must be skull crackers. So we got skull cracker trains. Oh look, there's a Death Shrieker rocket. Okay, so oh, sorry, I'm in the way. There's right here there's there's a death shrieker rocket right behind my fat head so we got death shrieker rockets dreadquake mortars skull crackers traditional iron demons um and we saw the lava cannons so like okay oh, okay um, oh my god oh and this this scene is beautiful uh man this looks right out of uh this fucking reminds me of the dune movie um when the like the evil the evil guys are getting all set up is that dress well? Destiny rising from within the crucible. I am I'm like 50% sure. No, I, I would say I'm more like 75% sure that's dress at the ashen. Cause like we're in the black fortress. Here we see the infernal guard, and these must be castellans, which are the, the hero version. So we have the Infernal Guard with all of their, um, God, this is such a fucking badass scene, dude. Destiny. So you have the Infernal Rising Guard with all their axes, and the then crucible. presiding over them is Draswack, because he is the master of the Black, the Black Fortress. God, he looks good. And then, oh, look at this fucking shit! Um, ooh, is that a Bull Centaur render? Because there's a single Bull Centaur here with, like, an armored helmet. You can see him here. I wonder if this is the hero version. So the, the Bull Centaur Rindo is the hero version. Who the fuck are these guys? Oh my god, look at these! So okay, okay, you've got the you've got the infernal guard there. Then are these the immortals? Please tell me these are the immortals. Oh, please tell me these are the immortals. I mean, look at those masks. Because they're not, those are not Infernal. Um, Infernals do not look like this. They don't have the big hats. They have these helmets. So the ones with the glowing helmets and the sword and board, um, those are probably Iron Sworn because there are two classifications of Infernal Guard. There's regular Infernal Guard, which are these guys with the red helmets. And then there's the Iron Sworn, who are like the super big badass boys. Um, I'm assuming that's these guys since they're up in front and like super crazy looking, but these guys with like the classic big hats, but they got the super scary fucking death masks. Those have to be the immortals. Please give us the immortals. The immortals were something I was not, ex I, I was expecting to get, but like, you know, might not have happened. Um, God damn. They look good. And then, oh, dude, Ast look at Astrogoth's design. He looks so good. So Astrogoth's original model is kind of doof uh, kind of doofy looking um, because it, it it's very old and um, the proportions are very goofy because back in the day, Games Workshop couldn't design dwarfs properly. So they basically made their bodies very squat and then they made their arms and legs like mass. Or, sorry, they didn't have legs. Um, their hands and feet, <laughs> they didn't have limbs. They had like just their hands and feet sticking out of their bodies um, were huge. Um, and um, Astrogoth's model in particular was really silly looking because the banners were like fucking gigantic on his back. But this looks sick. Like, uh, so he's got, he's got the, the, the hammer with him. He's got, oh, he's got like lava running through that. Look at how, so he's got, you see there's some kind of a cylinder full of, I'm imagining the fuel he uses to power his, uh, his mecha suit, but he's got like lava running through the, the veins on the machine. And you can see he's got like limb extenders. So like his, his hands, uh, at least one of his hands still works. This one, I'm, it looks like it might be a metallic hand, uh, attached onto him. It doesn't look like a normal hand like this one does. Uh, but you can see his feet down here because his um, 
uh, Astrogoth has to use this suit to get around because Astrogoth, a significant of part of his body has turned to stone. Like his legs have completely petrified. So he can't actually move his legs anymore. Um, so he designed this suit uh, with the, um, to allow him to move around. And he's got a very Hold nice hat. Fire. Yeah, I love, look how good he looks. Look how good he looks. Oh my god, his eyes are terrifying, and the, I also really like they made his beard. They made him very old looking. Um, the original, uh, the original Astrogoth model. I I don't know if I've been saying Astrogoth correctly. This is Astrogoth Iron Hand. Um, <laughs> um, but his original model. Uh, I don't think they usually tended to go with making him as elderly looking, but he is. He's ancient. Um, Astrogoth Iron Hand has been around at least for I believe two millennia. Um, but it's heavily implied he's been around since Zar Nagrund was raised. Um, so like he's old. Um, but I'm glad he looks the part here. Is to see it burn first. Also, first of all, look at his face. Look how beautifully fucking detailed his face is. Like his teeth are kind of messed up, probably because he's like more elderly than the others. But like his eyes are terrifying looking. Like, this is a creature that has no soul. He has sold it in exchange for who knows what kind of horrible powers. And he's got, like, just a beautiful designed mustache and beard and stuff. And he's got butchy eyebrows. And he's got, like, he's got, like, scars on his face and these old crows. He, he looks so good. Also, I fucking love how understated this is. Like, here you see the Kadai Destroyer is completely inert, right? It hasn't been activated yet. And all he does is he walks over with his hammer and just goes pop because that's all he fucking needs because he is fucking Astrogoth Iron Hand. To seize the world with this fire is to see it burn And he just first. activates it with that one little, that one little strike. We got a Bail Taurus. Okay, so we got, we got the Bail Taurus here, which is awesome, giant. Wow, look how big the fucking wingspan is. Also, poor dwarfs, dude. They're just getting absolutely annihilated in this trailer. So the Bale Taurus looks absolutely incredible. It might be a great Taurus, but um, could, I, I, I'm, I don't know how you'll be able to tell the difference between the two until I see it. Actually, I would bet it's a great Taurus, not a Bale Taurus. Bale Taurus are the bigger ones, uh, or the scarier ones. Oh my god, dude. Just seeing the way the Kadai is animated for the Destroyer. There's a skull cracker. Oh, the Lamasu looks so good. He looks so much better. Oh my God, he looks so much better. Wow, what a glow up. The Lamasu is like, careful who you make fun of in high school. Cause like, God, what a beautiful monster. And he's like, I love he's like roaring magic at the dwarves. Oh, oh, look, look, look. The, they've got, um, they've got, uh, fuck. Um, Fire glaives. Those are fire glaives. Um, they're they're infernal guard. Wait, actually, those are those fire gla fire glaives. Those might just be infernal guard with great weapons. I can't remember if they can have great weapons. I, mm, I think they're fire glaives, but they could also. They're definitely infernal guard. Um, and infernal guards. They, so fire glaives are halberds that are also rifles. Um, I can't tell if these are fire glaives or if these are just like traditional two-handed great weapons. But anyway, back to the Lamasu. This thing looks so good. Uh, the Lamasu, in my opinion, is hands down one of the fucking ugliest tabletop models um, that was like still around in 8th edition. It looked horrible. It was a hideous model um, because the whole thing is that it's supposed to be like a manticore, but it has the face of like a dwarf. Um instead of like uh like a typical monster face but the the tabletop model the head was like literally 50 percent of the mini it's its head like its face was huge and then it had this kind of small body behind it and it looked terrible uh so ca has massively improved the design like my god that is so much better looking um okay Oh, look at, look, they've got a fucking firing line of iron demons. Bop, 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 bop. 
fucking could die fireborn look at that animation look at that they're like oh they're like they're fucking they look like gens kind of um or ifrits or whatever you want to call like like elemental spirits right like granted they're essentially fire but they're more like fire demons but like fire spirits right but look at the look how well they're animated oh that's so cool looking it's like they're they're like living tornadoes of like lava or fire wow they look incredible And you can see them just like surfing across the ground. Oh my God. They look so good. Okay. Seeing these, I, I know this isn't the, sp I know this isn't the time. I know this isn't the place, but I'm going to say it. Seeing these things animated puts two things in my mind. Number one, give me Araby using these <laughs> skeletons. You know, uh, they should be other elementals, like they should be elemental spirits of uh, the of Hish or Light, which look like wind desert elementals, or, you know, elementals of, like, not these, these, but like these animations and designs would be perfect for Araby. You know who else they would be perfect for? Fucking Prince Apophis, the, uh, the, the scarab prince of uh, the Tomb Kings, who's like literally made out of a swarm of scarabs. Like, this is exactly how he would be animated. He would just have, like, a single dagger and be able to vomit scarabs on people. But, like, god damn, those look good. Oh, shit! Look, look, so you can see there is a Sorcerer Prophet riding on a Great Taurus. And then here you can see another Sorcerer Prophet riding on a Lamasu. Nice, so we got our mounts. Uh, we've got We've got the Dreadquake Mortars. Uh, we got bull centaurs, we got hobgoblins, we got slaves, we got infernal irons, or I'm going to call them iron swarm, but, uh, uh, well, okay, I think they're iron swarm, but I'm going to call them infernal hot hats for right now. Uh, we got infernal hot hats, the Kadai, which stand out beautifully. Um, man, that dwarf hold is fucking burning, dude. Uh, okay, so it's really interesting. Look at the Chaos Dwarf War Machines. Um, here, I'm going to... Hold on, I'm going to move my body out of the way. Uh, if you look at the Chaos Dwarf War Machines down here, very interesting, there is a single War Machine. Um, they're huge, like, like they're bigger than the Bull Centaurs. These things are fucking massive. But it looks like the Chaos Dwarf War Machines are going to be like Queen Bess, where it is a single War Machine um, that is probably absolutely devastating um, instead of like a firing line of war machines, like it's not, it's not like four to a unit or three to a unit. It looks like it's one per unit, but I imagine they're going to have a significant amount of health. Um, and they're also probably able to move around here. You can see an iron demon as well. So it looks like the iron demons are also solo acts, which makes sense. Um, like they're big. Also, what the fuck is going on here? Look, look over here on the map. Okay, I'm a, those have to be spells. That that has to be two spells going off because there's literally nothing. Like, there's nothing anywhere near there. And then all of a sudden, ba-boom, ba-boom. So I'm assuming those are two spells from the lore of Hashit. Um, and then, of course, the Kadai does his movie roar. <laughs> What a sound, man. What a sound. Mwah, ah. That is, that is, that is tasty. And, oh man, that dirty brass, that like dirty brass. Oh my God. So here we can see, uh, looks like we got the Bulsendor render back here. You can see the skull cracker, Kadai, Hobgoblins, the Hobgoblin cavalry, which here is a perfect side-by-side -side comparison of the two. And then we got Astragoth front and center. All right. Uh, oh, and Lamasu with a wizard casting spells. The Destroyer. Fucking incredible. 10 out of 10 trailer. Looks amazing. Feels amazing. I I am very fucking excited for this. Um, this is probably... I This honestly, in my opinion, has to be one of, if not the most hotly anticipated races in all of Total War Warhammer history. Um, like, although I personally... 
um, care, you know, there, there are other races I care a lot about. The Chaos Dwarfs are just kind of one of those, like, borderline squatted races that people have been anticipating since the series was announced. Now, I, I do think that, like, Kislev and Grand Cathay technically were more exciting for a lot of folks because they were, like, brand new. But, uh, anyway, um, let's dive into the article. Um, we have an article here that is called Welcome to Forge of the Chaos Dwarfs Introducing Astrogoth Iron Hand. So it says the honestly not really that secret secret. This was probably the most easily predicted DLC of all time. Um, secret is out of the wait. Did I not shut this bag? At long last, the missing puzzle piece of the Warhammer Three experience you've all been waiting for is on the way, and we guarantee this one that once we have this lot rocked up, things are never going to be the same. We can confirm that Forge of the Chaos Dwarfs will be arriving uh, Warhammer Three as part of the 3.0 update on Feb on April 13th. You can pre-order it today, which, by the way, uh, I'm going to show for my second here. If you want to help support the channel, you can also pre-order it probably right now. But if not, then later today uh, down using my Fanatical link where you'll be able to save more than 10% because I will talk to the guys at Fanatical and they're usually pretty good about it. So don't do don't get it off Steam. Uh, save yourself some money. I want you to keep those sweet, precious hashed bucks in your wallet. So for you to save some money and help support what I do here, make sure you use the fanatical link uh, down below uh, because that is a great way to help uh, support the channel as well as save yourself some money. All right. Before we get stuck into Astrogoth Iron Hand, we've got a quick update on our DLC plans. Legendary characters. Forge of the Chaos Dwarfs includes three. Oh, interesting. There's only three characters. Uh, three ferocious and foul legendary lords. Astrogoth, Iron Hand, the High Priest of Hashid, Draswath, the Ashen. Okay, so it was Draswath, the Sorcerer Prophet of Hashid, and Zatan, the Black Commander of the Tower of Zar. They're joined by the one. Oh, there's. Okay, so there are four characters, just one of them is a legendary hero. Um, they're joined by the one and only legendary Hobgoblin hero himself, Gorda's Backstabber. This maniacal group intend to construct the Great Drill of Hashet, with which they will burrow through the very fabric of reality itself to conquer both the known world and perhaps also far more. You better watch your fucking ass, 40k. The Chaos Dwarfs are coming for you! <laughs> that's, that's the actual reveal at the end of Arcs of Omen, is that it's a 40k crossover event with Warhammer Fantasy, and the Chaos Dwarfs are about to come bursting into 40k and start owning everybody. Uh, because magic is so much more OP than than psychic powers. Anyway, um, okay, so this is this is different. This is different. Uh, releasing three legendary lords with an additional legendary hero is new for us, and is the path we'll be following for future releases. Uh, you told us you wanted more legendary heroes, and we agree. These new heroes can be recruited and used by all the lords in any given pack, offering a lot more uh, playstyle flexibility than before. In the case of Gordas, his appearance improves Hobgoblins across the board, allowing more players to tap into his amazingly quick Wolf Cavalry. Uh, in the first of a series of deep dives into this upcoming troublesome trio, you can read about both burly brawlers below. Hmm. That, okay, that's re I don't know how I feel about that. That's really interesting. I think, man, I some people are not going to like this. Um, I think for me, personally, I am very fond of this change uh, okay i know it's not a popular opinion it's just my opinion it's just as valid as anyone else's so like if you don't agree with me that's totally fine um i don't think legendary lords are the end-all be-all of the total war experience i think legendary heroes have a lot more value uh because they can appear across multiple campaigns so like gore does can show up no matter what campaign you're playing um so they have a lot more mileage as opposed to just purely legendary lords but like at the same time legendary lords do kind of like have that kind of iconic you know they they have like unique campaign mechanics um and they kind of are like you know they help kind of determine the baseline of how your campaign is going to play i man i don't know how i feel about this like this i mean it's it's more legendary lords than any of the like baseline packs right so like all of the baseline races have two um or one in the case of the demons um, and then all of the, uh, all of the pre-order DLC races only got two. Um, I, well, it's like, really, if you think about it, like the Tomb Kings and the Vampire Coast are the only ones that got four. Um, but so like three is great. Don't get me wrong. Three is awesome. I, I, I am curious where Shartor is 
Um, if I had to guess, which I am guessing, but I feel very confident about this guess, I would bet that Games Workshop told them they cannot use Shartor. Um, I would bet, because like he seems like an easy slam dunk, right? Of like Bull Centaur, Legendary Lord, uh, which would be very, very different from the other three. Because like we have two Sorcerer Prophets and a and a fighter, though granted the two Sorcerer Prophets are very different because Astrogoth, you know, has got his fucking, he's got his fucking mech suit here. Uh, with his Waluigi shoes, which <laughs> it's so funny. Um, and then you've got um, uh, Drasoath, who's like a much more typical Sorcerer Prophet that can ride on uh, his big, scary uh, Mount Cinderbreath. So um, I don't know. Um, I feel like I feel like if Shartor was not available, like Games Workshop says, no, you can't use him. He's an Age of Sigmar character. He's not a fantasy character, so you're not allowed to use him. Then like who else can you use um and at that point i think i would honestly rather have gordas than uh like uh, don't get me wrong i know there are other characters like there's gorth the cruel who is a sorcerer prophet but he would literally there's nothing i do not see how he could possibly be different than drasoath um like and we know nothing about him like you'd have to create a lot of nonsense to make him work which would take a lot of effort that they probably didn't have um okay i'm i'm going to come back i'm going to circle back around to this i want to get through the article so we have astrogoth who looks fucking incredible uh astrogoth iron hand is the oldest living sorcerer prophet of the chaos dwarfs the high priest of hashit and once the most potent sorcerer to walk the plane of zarduk astrogoth's waning powers are a result of prolonged petrification, leaving him bound to a mechanical device that grants him movement. Astrogoth takes his place on the battlefield as an armored caster with a mix. Oh, he has a mix spell lore of fire and hashet, able to cover plenty of ground at a respectable speed and hold up his own in close combat against enemy combatants. But on the campaign side of things, this high priest has a few more tricks up his metal sleeves, excelling in the Tower of Czar by generating more conclave influence than any other Dawi Czar, all of which makes him all the tougher to zerp. Those are buzzwords that I don't know what they mean. Dude, the orc slaves look terrible. <laughs> like in a good way. Like, man, these these lads are beat up. Oh, he looks so good. So, uh, just, okay, so he is a heavily armored melee combatant who apparently has respectable speed, whatever that means. And he has fire and hashet. That's pretty cool. So I'm guessing Drasowath will have pure hashet. Dude, Gordas is terrifying looking. Could you imagine, like, coming around, a, going down a dark alley, and you see this fucking guy waiting for you? Like, look at that face. Having outlived most of his fellow tribal leaders, Gorda's backstabber's naturally distrustful disposition and lashings of cunning grant him an enduring talent for survival. With thick scars crisscrossing his shoulders, Gorda's luck carries him far on the battlefield. Focusing on melee combat, this sneaky fellow works his way behind enemy lines either on foot or mounted atop a giant wolf for faster movement. Gameplay-wise, Gordov's backstabber is a force to be reckoned with, adding some serious versatility to Hobgoblin armies. His presence in an army grants him incredibly powerful buffs and stat bonuses, and he has some incredibly handy skills. He can keep ammunition flowing with shoot em or enable Vanguard deployment for all Hobgoblins with Sneaky. And if stealth isn't your style, get the gits, summons a band of Hobgoblin cutthroats to command. He has a fucking summon ability? Oh my, wow. Okay, so Gordov's is actually probably going to be super fucking good. Oh, look at the tattoo he has. That's sick. He's got like a wolf creature tattoo on his arm. That is so badass. I was not expecting him to have a tattooed sleeve. Oh, yeah. See, there's the armor I was talking about. I like I like how they have this terrible piece of shit shoe. <laughs> yeah, that's what his shoes look like. Um, When Gordas is nestled in among your army or breaking off from the pack to cover ground with the lesser generic Lord of the Dawi Zar, he's an invaluable asset. Campaign whoa okay new in oh wait okay so it's by province new intake labor actions control labor workload efficiency and raw materials what the fuck oh my god look how many resources they have money something 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 and then some kind of big fat symbol Whoa, this looks intricate. Economy and labor. No thriving faction Warhammer 3 is complete without a robust economy to fund their infernal war machine. The Dawis are no different. 
The Chaos Dwarf need laborers, and they can acquire them by besting their foes in battle or via the convoy mechanic, which we'll have more in detail about in the third part of the series in a couple of weeks, before sending them to mining and work in mining outposts to harvest raw materials. Raw materials are crucial for the Chaos Dwarf's empire building and a necessity for constructing the more advanced buildings and structures. Beyond that, they can be converted into armaments that unlock the true strength of the Chaos Dwarf's fiery military. What? <laughs> Acquire labor, harvest raw materials, construct nightmarish buildings, and forge hellish weapons, bolster the Chaos Dwarfs. Okay. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay, so okay, so you've got laborers or labor workload. Okay, what in the world is going on here? Okay, so you get laborers here. And then there's raw material. So these must be raw materials armaments. I don't know what the bullhead is supposed to be. Plus, not let's not forget the power of the treasury earned by winning battles, constructing outposts, utilizing factories, and selling armaments via convoys. Jesus Christ, the Chaos Doors have many avenues with which to earn some serious coin, and it's up to you to ensure the gold keeps on flowing. Whoa, what is this? One, two, okay, so there's four, wait, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Oh, okay, so this is, wow, look at this, the Tower of Czar. So you have four sections, so this section has... Four slots in three trees. Sorcery district, military district, industry district. Oh, there it is. Armaments. Yeah, so armaments are the weird little, like, red. Okay, so the armaments are up here. So this is armaments. That must be raw materials. That's a big number. You got your treasury, and then you've got whatever that is. The Tower of Tsar stands tall within the Chaos Dwarfen capital of Tsar Nagrant. It's a political battleground for the Dawi Zar and key to their success as an almighty faction of chaos. Vying for seats within the tower will grant a diverse range of bonuses and rewards to the Chaos Dwarfs. It also presents an opportunity for some competition between the factions outside of warfare thanks to multiplayer... Oh, thanks to multiplayer compatibility. What? That sounds fun. Adding a cooperative edge to the campaign experience in the form of districts. Districts can benefit the entire culture of Chaos Dwarfs, encouraging all to work together to enhance our Nagarin for everyone's benefit. Is this a fucking diplomacy mechanic? Oh, it's the bull symbol. Uh, oh, okay. Okay, so they... Wait. Uh, Conclave influence. All right, so... I assume that's what that is? Okay, but whatever, okay, whatever you use to buy these is this here. So you've got gold, raw materials, armaments, whatever the bull thing is to influence the Tower of Tsar, probably influence because you, in, yeah, that would make sense. And then you also have laborers that look like they're dictated by province. And you've got labor actions, which look like uh, diktats, which are like the thing you can do with the, the, the dark elves. Um where you can like select a province and like sacrifice a certain amount of slaves um, to get a thingamajigger or, or with Slanesh. Slanesh can also do that. So it looks like Chaos Dwarfs will have that as well. Um, Let's see. Districts can be, uh, okay. With the chance to experiment with a variety of play styles and try your hand at some sneaky diplomacy with the potential for some serious backstabbing, the Tower of Tsar is one of the most in-depth, unique and versatile campaign mechanics in Total War Warhammer to date. Well, this looks fucking cool. Oh, oh, look. So, and the money goes up. So you can see here that looks like these two got slotted recently because they have a four turn cooldown and it's more expensive to take these than the empty slots. So, okay, this must be, this person must be playing as Astrogoth because this is Astrogoth's banner symbol. And you can see how um, it looks like these are two other factions I'm assuming this is Draswath because it's got his little brazier thing. And then this is Zatan because it's got the super obnoxious blue coloring. So it looks like I, I'm, a, I'm guessing you can steal their seats or their, their bonuses, but it costs you 112 instead of 75 is what it looks like it's saying. Oh, look at the bull centaurs. They look so good. Stand tall with the bull centaurs. 
Serving the Legion of Asgore, the Bull Centaurs are a monstrous addition to the Chaos Dwarf roster. Rocking the upper torso of a Chaos Dwarf and the body of a ferocious bull, these powerful melee combatants are fearsome beasts that, thanks to their higher armor and favorable stats, can play both offensive and defensive roles. But don't let their hulking size or preference for great weapons fool you. They are most definitely keen-witted. And then take to the skies! God damn, the Lamasu looks so much better. Um... Bounding across the battlefield on four legs isn't the only way to maneuver your units. The Bale Taurus is a gigantic monster with, again, the body of a bull, but this time coupled with the membrous wings of a dragon. Ridden into battle or flying solo, the Bale Taurus burns with horrific intensity. Weapons that strike it liquefy into multi metal, and the monster sets the ground ablaze as it moves, ready to devour its foe's hull. The more commonly spotted Bale Taurus won't be the only one on the battlefield, however. The Great Bale Taurus... Okay, so I got him back backwards earlier. Reserved for the most powerful Great Dwarves will be will be for those wanting to go bigger. Alternatively, the Lamasu, which is thought to be a rare and interesting mutation of the Great Tori. It is not a being of rage, but instead of manifestation of sorcerous intelligence. Though not as powerful as its cousin in combat, the Lamasu is instead able to employ magic, launching fireballs at the enemy, or transporting allies on shadowy mounts in a blink of an eye. What the fuck does that mean? So, okay, so it sounds like it has fireball. What does transporting allies on shadowy mounts mean? Alternatively, as they are blessed with an uncanny, insidious charisma that can befuddle enemies, they may simply choose to let death creep mysteriously through enemy ranks. Oh, I don't know what that means, but okay, that sounds spooky. Uh, we'll be sharing a more in-depth look at Astrogoth Iron Hand, the gameplay elements discussed above in an upcoming Forge of the Chaos Dwarf Showcase, so keep an eye on the official Total War channel and our socials for further info. Beyond that, we got more blogs and videos on the way very soon, showcasing our other two legendary lords from the Forge of the Chaos Dwarfs, and of course we'll have a full set of patch notes when the Chaos Dwarfs arrive in Update 3.0 on April 13th. See you on the battlefield. All right. Uh, okay. Wow. That was a fuck ton of information, actually. Um, I am super excited. Um, the Chaos Dwarfs are looking pretty intense. Um, that, that's a, that's a lot of words. Um, that, which is a good thing. I'm not, not saying that's a bad thing. Um, uh, that, that's awesome. I am genuinely extremely excited. Um, Oh man. I, okay. So I'm, I'm not going to weigh this video down. I've already been going for like almost 50 minutes. I am not going to weigh this video down with a discussion about the reformatting of race packs. Um, I will say this does make me feel much stronger about my mini race theory. Um, that if they're already kind of looking to like do races with three legendary Lords and a legendary hero, uh, instead of just four legendary lords. Well, that's not the same, though. It's not smaller. It's just that one of the lords has turned into a hero. Hmm. Hmm. Um, overall, I am extremely excited. Uh, I cannot wait for April 13th. Uh, I cannot wait to learn more about this. I am extremely fucking excited. The Chaos Dwarfs look incredible. Um, the Kadai... Uh, for me, I have to say Kadai Destroyer, easily the most badass-looking fucking thing. Uh, let me know down in the comments, uh, what, what, what like stole your breath away? What are you the most excited about? Uh, do let me know whether it's from a part of the trailer or from the article. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I don't want to ramble on too much longer. So I'm just going to say that I'm going to make a separate video talking about the change in format to the, the race DLCs. Um, my literally my only disappointment is I would have really liked a bull centaur legendary Lord. However, I honestly think Gore does is better value. Um, but I don't know. Um, it, it, it's, it's kind of one of those things that I think we'll have to, um, kind of wait and see. Uh, I am curious. Um, if I, I would really love for creative assembly to confirm that Shartor got AOSified, um, because that would make me feel better about it, to be honest. If it turns out we didn't get Shartor because he's considered an Age of Sigmar character, not a fantasy character, like that's out of CA's hands. Like that's just Games Workshop being Games Workshop. Though I will say, if Games Workshop is gonna do that, they better fucking use Shartor when the Chaos Dwarfs get their inevitable Age of Sigmar army coming up. Uh, because like we've had a lot of buildup going towards the Chaos Dwarfs being released in Age of Sigmar. There's a lot of lore about them now. Um, we know they're coming. So like if they're going to fucking pull that card, then he better be one of the miniatures that they're releasing. Um, though uh, obviously they would probably have to change his sculpt a little bit. But like he's no longer available for purchase. Uh, Forge World had him. 
Um, but I think the entire Chaos Wharf range is gone, if I recall correctly. Um, so, like, I don't, I'm not really sure what is being played at here. It's interesting. Um, it actually, you know what? For my own sanity, I, I'm just, I'm just curious. Um, oh, I want to, I have to look. <laughs> I have to look. Hold on. Because, like, Forge World got rid of most of their fantasy stock, um, which is really sad. Uh, because they had a lot of really cool monsters that I would have loved to have bought, but unfortunately that time is gone. Um, yeah, no, the the fantasy line has been reduced to six units, and they are all the it's just their big greater demons, and they're all out of stock. <laughs> so yeah, no, um, yeah, the entire fantasy line is gone, uh, which is kind of wild. Um, so yeah, um, if you didn't get it then. Uh, too bad, so sad, I guess, which includes me. So, uh, that's gonna be it. Uh, do let me know what y'all are the most excited about. Um, I, I am not going to encourage the discussion about the, the legendary hero replacing legendary Lord conversation. I think we're going to do our own video on that. Um, probably tomorrow, I guess, um, depending on if CA releases anything. So, uh, thank you all again for watching. Uh, personally, I'm super fucking excited for this. Um, literally just like the slightest gray lining on an otherwise flawless reveal. Um, and, uh, I can't wait. It's going to be an exciting month. I told you fucking told you it's going to be an exciting month. Uh, talk to you guys later.